Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus gives individual feedback to group members. Filmed on the 18th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Well, was we decided what we felt was stick, the sticking point for most people. So on the first day, we felt that the sticking point for most people was that they didn't know how to truly analyse where they're at. They didn't see that the reason for their fear of change, and they didn't see that they still hadn't really developed their will muscle, like, you know, to change. So that was the first day, and we thought, well, that you know, that's. We got all together all of the things we felt people haven't been looking at and or that are causing them to stagnate. And then we put it in a logical sequence of events so that we could lead you from one place to the other. Does that make sense? And it took, uh, yeah, we've probably had 15 or so, 20, 15 to 20 meetings about it, Corny, myself and Mary. And we just fleshed out the, the details, most of the details... I suppose came from myself and my, you know, my feelings, and the guys then decided what they were more comfortable with teaching, um, and then I got what was left over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's basically how it happened. Short summary. <laughs> how it happened. But yeah, we feel we do feel that if people, you know, if people think about what has been said to them during the program that it will help them get unstuck if they are sincere about it, certainly. Yeah. 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 Joy. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's grab the mic. So for those who are looking after the mic, and if we can just uh, grab a mic from one side too. And I'm happy to ask questions while everyone sort themselves out with the question list. So. Okay. Far away. It's about repentance and forgiveness again. Yep. Good. Um, so looking at some of the relationships with my husbands, is it possible that I need to forgive them in some instances and I need to repent for the way I've treated them? So there's both... There'll be a mixture. A mixture, okay. There'll be a mixture, yeah. And um, so I certainly need to repent for the damage I've done to my children. Yep. And, and also for the fact that some of the damage was individual choices and some of the damage was just a general choice to deny what was in yourself. Right. In other words, a general refusal to forgive. Yes. Yep. And um, do I also need feel the need to repent for the partners my children have attracted because of the damage that I have caused. Now, when did they attract these partners? In their adult life. In their adult life. Now, of course, there are things that you will see that uh, have caused you, have, co have caused them to make the choices they've made. Yes. That you see came from you. Yes. And the more, um, like, the more open you are to your own emotional and feelings and the process of forgiveness the more open you will actually become to actually seeing those links. Okay. So you'll see the multi-generational damage that you created. Yeah. Well, that's the next question is um, because I can see the injuries go from my children to their children. Of course. And yeah. so I can, I can be responsible for me repenting for the damage that's passed on to the next generation. Yeah, because it, honestly it's passed on to hundreds Everyone. of generations. Um. And the other question is about, um, so I, I caused damage to thousands of people in the Tony Robbins environment, people I well, spoke to. The reality is every one of us have caused damage to thousands of people. Yes. Particularly if we've had children because, because of their children and 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 they've all been influenced by some of the damage we've actually got in ourselves, you see. So... So almost everyone on the planet has caused damage to thousands of people. I'm talking about people that I've directly taught. Untruth to? Untruth to, yep. yes. Yes, and your children are one of those groups of people, by the way. Yes, yeah. and um, 
and I also feel some repentance for the fact that my son has talked to millions of people teaching untruth. Yes, because as a result followed. of you teaching yes. him the untruth, yes? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. And, and if you engage the reason why you taught it, you can see that it met a lot of your addictions. Totally. So if you focus on the causal reason, which is the, re the forgiveness thing, mm. of looking at the addictions, which were all about, yep. what were all the addictions about? Um, no, not, don't list what they are. No, what no, were no. they all about collectively? Collectively. They were all about avoiding some hurt. Oh, right. So yep. you, even your attraction to some kind of religious faith or some kind of uh, teaching on the planet or some kind mm. of new age concepts yep. were all based around the avoidance, avoidance generally of a whole heap of holes, mm. you know, yes. all emotional hurt inside of yourself. Mm. So once you repent, once you forgive the, the emotional hurt, which all came from the childhood yep. arrangement, then, of course, repentance is highly likely through the process, isn't it? Yeah. Because you'll see everything that was the result of what of you avoiding that forgiveness process. Thank yeah. you very much. So it's not that complicated, no. actually, because a lot of times you can actually go, okay, I did 2,500 things there, but it all was one thing. You know, and all I need to do is forgive this and go through the big emotion of that. And you'll feel it. You'll feel the change. And you'll feel also through the process that you can ask for God's forgiveness, which will help you go through the process emotionally. So, so we haven't had the last day yet. <laughs> so, so, so and the last day is one of the most important days that we're going to leave you with as well. Yep. Okay, so if we just come over. Let's go now first and then carry on. We sorted out over there yet? A few more to go yet? Getting close, yep. No worries. Yep. No mic? Where's the mic? Is there a mic on that side? Yep. Sorry. It's funny, I asked for somebody to grab a mic on that side and none of you grabbed one. Interesting. Well, can, can you see that that's because all of you want to be served and none of you want to do the serving? Just as a thought. Uh, I know that uh, abortion is, uh, the uh, uh, abortion has been up on the, uh, on the web in interviews. Yes. But uh, uh, dealing with my own uh, 50 odd years ago. Yep. But uh, more importantly, uh, how I managed to comply with my daughter's uh, abortion was that facade at the, at the time that I. Why, why is it more important? Well, she's passing things on down to her. I'm passing on to her, and she's passing on to her children. Yeah, but why is it um, more important than what you chose? Well, it would hurt her soul. Yeah, but yours hurt would yours. Injure. Yes. So, can you see? There's already a problem where you think your your daughter's soul is more important than your own. Right. Yes. Which is not. So, from God's perspective, right. is it more important that your daughter deals with it, or you? Oh, more important that. I deal with mine, she deals with hers. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's more important that both of you deal with it right. than anything and else. And, so and it's not, uh, it's interesting the way you termed your question. Let's start with yours, shall we now, now that we're on it. So I'll grab your question because it's actually on the list, isn't it? So let's uh, do that. Yes. It's a bit of a mess and I'll work it out. That's fine. Uh, yeah, pr uh, oh, uh, mm, uh, can we have it without, <laughs> without that? Yeah, probably need it just to keep track of everything. So Nell's question was, dealing with my, she wanted to help with dealing with my abortion, but more importantly, you use the same term you just used now, my compliance with my daughter's abortion. And it's interesting you use the term more importantly, I found. It's, right. it's not more importantly. It's not. It's, right. it's the way you see it. See, you see harm to your daughter as worse than harm to yourself. And it's not mm -hmm. from God's right. perspective. And this is where we so, need to get God's perspective. Harm to yourself is just as bad as harm to your daughter. Right. So it's a matter of uh, repentance. Well, there's and, two issues um, you've raised. One issue is you believe harm to your daughter is worse than harm to yourself. So there's an issue of self-love that you need to address. Mm -hmm. right? You don't value yourself. You value your children more than yourself. 
Right? And that is a big issue because when you value your children more than yourself, you teach your children that they are superior to other people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so there's yeah. obviously an issue there that needs to be addressed and I'll leave that with you. Now, a number of you ladies have asked about abortion. How many of you have asked? Uh, we've got Alwyn. So this, if I can incorporate the abortion question in together for the both of you. Um, yes, you murdered a person. Yes. That's a pretty severe uh, action to take to avoid an emotion, isn't it? So that tells you that you have some ethical issues to deal with, some moral issues to deal with, and one important issue you have to deal with is this, and that is the reason why you did it. There's always, a re when a person has an abortion, there's always the reason why. And the reason why is related very much to the thing you don't want to feel. You know, there's something you didn't want to feel. And what you need to do is get to what you didn't want to feel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so what was your reason why, your primary reason? There's usually more than one, but... Oh, um, th that I, I wasn't loved and... Um, uh, I, so were you pregnant uh, I in or out of wedlock? Uh, in, in wedlock. In wedlock? In yes. So uh, you, yep. Would have been a fourth child. Yep. Um, uh, so it was your fourth child? Would, would have, Would have yes. been the fourth? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. you, weren't, uh, you weren't loved and? Uh, I was uh, physically, mentally and emotionally just had it. Right. Uh, so you were uh, exhausted? <laughs> yeah. And I suggest to you one of the reasons why you're exhausted is because of the previous emotion I suggested to you, that family mm. is more important than you. Right. That's one of the reasons why you were exhausted. Uh -huh. Yes. Because you wanted to have enough, you wanted to have a few children first, and you've got to ask yourself that why you wanted these children. Uh, have you uh, never thought of that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I hadn't. They just came along. They just came along, yes, but you entered a relationship, and they came along, you had sex, so obviously you chose to do some things here, and, and children come along and you were getting exhausted. Why were you getting exhausted? Because uh, I was up during the, the, the night with a young one, uh, bedwetting, asthma and changing and you know, all, Can you all the... Can uh... see why you were exhausted was because you were denying and he was denying a whole heap of emotions and all of those emotions were being shown up in the children and that was causing a whole heap of in sicknesses inside of them which then you had to... Address. Address. Right? So mm -hmm. that is all about your suppression. Your exhaustion came from where? Your... Oh, not speaking up too. Yes. Uh, no. But, but Moses... It came from your choice to, to... avoid your hurt emotions. Oh, okay. To that... avoid my hurt emotions. Yes. That oh, caused right. your children to okay. respond because you were suppressing your emotions your children now will act out all, the, all of your emotions in their sicknesses. Right. Do you understand? So, and then so that caused you to be exhausted. So the irony is you were suppressing your hurt emotions so that you wouldn't get exhausted dealing with them and instead your children had to deal with them and then you then had to deal with your children which made you exhausted in the long run anyway. Right. Okay. And then in your exhaustion, instead of feeling the cause of your exhaustion, what did you do? Another child came along, so... You had an abortion. Yeah. 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 So it all happened because you didn't want to feel the cause of your exhaustion. What's mm -hmm. the cause of your exhaustion? Your own suppression of your own emotion. Right. That's the cause of suppression your exhaustion. Of my own emotion not being loved and wanting to uh, look after the children. Yes. But you, but you were suppressing your own emotion, then whenever you suppress your own emotion and you have children, the children act out those emotions, and then you've, uh, of course, you know, you're denying your emotion that creates disease, sicknesses in the children, then you've got to now go and serve those children, which actually makes you more of what you were trying to avoid in the first place. Right. <laughs> That's how 
attractions work. All right. So you need to see the reason why. So my suggestion, so just a brief suggestion of all those people who've had an abortion, you need to find the actual reasons why, the, 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 the justification inside of you that was so large that you were willing to take an immoral act and be completely unethical with another person's life. And it might be different for each abortion you had. There might be a different reason. There might be more than one reason. And if your husbands supported the abortion, then they also need to do exactly the same thing. Huh? Why? There was something you didn't want to feel. There's always something you didn't want to feel. And there is also the additional unethical choice to harm another person's life because you don't want to feel it. Does that make sense? That, so there's quite a number of things to look at when you're willing to have an abortion. There's quite a lot of different emotions that need to be examined. Have I spent enough time on that for you? You know where to go with that? I, I just couldn't understand why I, I, I couldn't understand why I, uh, I was so complicit with my daughter having one and not tried to. Was was that facade? Uh, oh, oh, it's really obvious why, because you allowed yourself to do it. Naturally, you were going to look at the justification that another person has to do it. So you, when you allow yourself yeah. to take an action like an abortion, you naturally have justified that action at some point. Right? In your case, the justification was, I was exhausted, what else do you expect? Right? That's the justification. Now, when another person, a woman, presents a different justification for an abortion, you will naturally support her because you're already in the place of supporting the choice to abort. Does that make sense? Right, yes. Look at your justification and hers because both of them are a part of your emotional healing that you need to undertake. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. Good day. Is there any questions about that before I move on? Matty? AJ, is the, the point, this is it's a bit of a technical question, I might be asking it to avoid some fear. <laughs> well, all um, questions generally are asking to avoid fear, but go okay. on. <laughs> um, is the point, the moment of conception with where the egg and the sperm, like, Yep. Is that the moment that the soul be incarnates? Yeah. So I've done IVF and so... Yep. Yeah. IVF is driven by huge emotions that are all mostly addictions. So uh, my, any person who's been in IVF programs are going to have to have a good look at the whole lot of emotions to see why. There's also quite a lot of children, a lot of eggs that die in this process or that are frozen for periods of time in that process, and a person needs to look at why they would be willing to freeze up, if you like, the expression of that soul's development for a period of time just for their own sake of having a child. So I've killed like 30 people? Well, most people involved in IVF programs have, have unknowingly killed, yeah, uh, on the average, 30 to 100 children, generally just because they want it. And in your case, it wasn't you who wanted it, was it? You mean children? Um, who wanted the child? I think we both did, but... Yeah, mm. see, you're not being honest, Manny. Okay. You wanted to give the woman whatever she wanted. <laughs> that was your emotion. That was your justification for the program. Yeah, okay. Right. So that's the feeling. You're willing to ignore all of the things that were happening in the program because you, or even finding out about what was happening from a soul mm. level, because you wanted to give the woman what she wanted, which was a child that she couldn't have, that she desperately wanted, that was an addiction in the first place. Does that make sense? So because so, of that, I was willing to... You, you were willing to be involved in a program unwittingly, but you were willing to be involved in a program that eventuated in the destruction of quite a number of... Well, it, it, it eventuated in the miscarriage of quite a number of souls. Yeah, miscarriage and then termination of some frozen embryos. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank okay. you. 
Yeah, it's pretty hard, isn't it? Facing some truths. Okay, let's start going through these lists. So now, cross Nell off. You're deleted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also I can delete. I'll, I'll get to that, I think. Okay, yep, I'll get to that. I'll, uh, there's quite a few sheets here, so I'll manage them. Okay, Ka Ka Karen. Um, can we just have the mic at Karen? Yep. Karen, uh, you said, I feel like I run away from people and towards God, but I do worry that because the real God wants me to embrace others, I am in some kind of addiction with the not real God. Spot on. You're spot on. Yep. You are running away from people because you find people very hard to deal with, really, emotionally, and, and because you're not uh, yet deal, dealt with the hurt emotion, you're actually wanting interactions with people in the, uh, that, or spirits who you believe are God, but unfortunately they're just feeding the addiction to run away from people. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So you're just spot on. So, so what would you do to feel that? Well, firstly, you need to get out of denial that running away from people is not running towards God. Like God these are all God's children. You run away from them, what does God feel? Well, God feels you're running away from God as well. Yeah. Mm. So... Instead, look at the emotional reason why you run away from people. That's my advice to you. Examine the emotional reason why you run away from people. There'll be quite a lot in it if you let yourself do that. Make sense? Thank you. Yep. Okay, Teresa. If we can have the... Um, you say, I would like to know the truth about my physical health and weight. What am I suppressing? What do I need to address? Yep. I, I can't agree that you want to know the truth about your physical health and weight. I just can't. The feeling that comes from you is that you don't want to know anything about yourself at this stage from an emotional perspective. What you want to know is how, if you feel your feeling, you just want to lose weight. I want to avoid my pain, yeah. Yeah, but you don't want to feel the emotional reason why the weight is there. Right. The feeling you have is you just want to lose weight. So I would start there. Feel that you only want to lose weight, but you don't want to face that it's an emotional cause. Do you understand that? Yeah. So let yourself feel that you don't want to feel the emotional cause rather than telling yourself that you do. Because if you wanted to feel the emotional cause, it would already be falling off you. Does that make sense? The weight would already be falling off you. Now, can I give you one more pointer? And that is weight being gathered to most of my body, not just in one specific location, but in most of my body, is all about rage. Mm. Right? Yeah. You are angry with, you, with the world mm. right? and you don't want to feel it. Right? So you're going to need to feel it. Mary, you want to say... Uh, just that, Teresa, I feel that some of that relates to what we talked about really briefly at the end of the addiction session yesterday. There's a lot of indignant rage in you that you're actually going to have to let go of some be false beliefs that you gained in your childhood where you felt entitled to a lot of things. And life and the law of attraction is showing you that you can't always have what you want and you're suppressing a lot of rage about that. So just letting go of that false belief, dealing with the, just letting yourself contemplate, okay, in my childhood I've absorbed the idea that I can have things that maybe from God's perspective I can't and working on that, I feel that would help you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good on. Rani, um, do you have a question about that though? Just a quick question about that. So let's just go to that before... Where's Rani, by the way? Oh, okay, good. You said when you're holding weight over your entire body, it was rage and general rage as well. What happens because you said if it, it's just in a particular place or something? What's good the question. What's the difference? It's rage about a specific issue. Ah, so, so it's always it, rage. So just... the second chakra rage, it's rage about nobody honouring you or, or feeling like you're worth anything. You know, or it could be if a woman... Uh, and they're holding it around their thighs and their in the first chakra area could be rage about sexuality, rage about being a woman. Does that make sense? So it just depends on where it is as to what the actual emotion is that caused. 
But in the end, it is all coming. Start. It all starts from this feeling of anger and rage about something. Thank you. Once you start feeling some of that emotion, you'll find you won't have to go on a diet and some of it will automatically start falling off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then you know you're on the right track. As soon as you hit some emotion and then over a few weeks you start noticing you're losing some weight, that means you're on the right track with getting rid of some of the emotion that's related to the weight. Yep. Rani, your question was, I'd like to know and become more aware of my sexual neediness and projections and demands towards men. A uh, really good question, and I was hoping to get to answer you in a, in a single session, actually. But uh, um, if I can give you just a couple of pointers. Look at the lack of relationship with your father and how much hurt you have associated inside of that sort of hurt child feeling that you have associated with that. And then also look at the amount of rage your mother has towards men and you can see that's a doubling up now. She, if, you, if you actually had a good relationship with a man, you would have also received your mother's rage. Does that make sense? No. no? Doesn't make sense? No. This is a, a lot of people don't realise this. Here's Rani, the child. Right? Here's the absent, in your case, how, how long's dad been absent? Um, he was never there. Only there for birthdays. Only there for birthdays. Yeah. All through your entire life. Yeah. Yeah. And he never really has engaged you emotionally. Not until recently. On any level, until recently. Yeah. Which is actually probably an indication that you're starting to deal with a few of these things, yeah. which is good. And then your mum, how does she feel about men? <laughs> you know what she feels about men? She's yep. pretty, pretty angry. She's angry. Men, right? Yep. Very. Yeah, very angry. Okay. So if you had a good relationship with a man, mm -hmm. then can you see you would have earned your mother's disapproval? Yep. Because she's angry with men. She yep. wants you to be angry with men too. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then with your dad, you have all these feelings of he doesn't want me, he doesn't care about me, he's, you know, all those feelings. Yep. Now, what you do to avoid those feelings is you project sexually what you've learned to do, and your mum does it too, by the way, so yep. you learnt it from her as a behaviour. You project a sexual emotion at a man, mm -hmm. and that makes him, you know that that makes him feel that sexual feeling. So now, now he's getting a feeling that he wants to engage you, and in return you get an engagement. You get, you get some approval emotionally in return. Mm -hmm. the, the stuff that you've been looking for when that you didn't get in your childhood, does that make yep. sense? Which is actually not the sexual thing you want from the man. It's all to do with all the things you missed out with your dad, you know, approval, mm -hmm. acceptance from a male, feeling like you have worth with regard to a male. Yep. And so you're going to find you're going to be going through a lot of emotions about your own feelings of a lack of worth with men. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. But the reason why, the question you had is, why do I project the sexual emotion? It's because you know that most men will respond, respond. to it. Yep. And your mum taught you this behaviour because that's exactly what she does. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's a very a learned behaviour, very young, and so it's automatic for you almost. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I feel. It's like... Yep. Just... It's just automatic and then you realise, and mm. the thing is to stop it yep. and go, okay, all I'm feeling here is I'm feeling the loss of a, pers a, a man's real love, approval, attention, and in the end, there's a deep feeling of inside of yourself, second chakra stuff, of hurt, hurt about yourself, yeah. that you don't have any value with men. And it's also been the major reason why you get angry with men. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you've had a lot of anger with men in the past, you know that. Yeah. And, uh, and that's because, you know, there's been this real neediness there, and when it wasn't met, Bang, straight away into the rage. <laughs> and your mum has modelled that behaviour to you because that's exactly also what she does. Yeah. yeah. So there's going to need to be some forgiveness of mum through the process because okay. a lot of this behaviour was created by mum mm -hmm. and also by the absent dad. dad, the dad who didn't care about you. He didn't act like he cared about you, so don't think that he did. <laughs> I know. I'm just starting to realise that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah, completely. Good eye. Um, so where have we got? So, so we've got some crust off here. Just got 
crossed off there. Denise, why do I reject love? Where's Denise? There she is here. And also, I think it was Joe yes. asked the same question. Yes. Did you not? So, Joe, both of you, this applies to both of you. The problem isn't that you're rejecting love. Huh? The problem is you're angry as hatters <laughs> about men. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. just angry about them, right? So, if we just said we've got both of you and Mother Mike. And it's not love you're rejecting. You know what you're rejecting? It's what you believe love to be. What do you believe love to be? Be honest, yes? What do you believe love to be? Well, I believe that, well, I thought I believed that love was untrustworthy. Yes, you do? Yep. And? Um, it tricks you. Tricks you, yes. It's um, false. Yeah. But what else does you. it demand of you? Um, what happens when a man loves you? Giving something back. Yeah, you, you always mm. want something, right? You mm. always want something, right? These are the angry emotions that are present in both of you that cause you to push what you call love away. Mm. But really what you're doing is pushing addictions away and real love you're not allowing yourself to experience because, because the problem with it is each one of us, once we have it, we've got like a force field around us, right? So you girls with regard to love are like this. You've got a force field around you. That's your filter. Your filter is love is harmful. Love is bad. Love is going to like cause damage to me. There's yeah. a whole set of beliefs about love. And so, and so you don't let real love enter you anyway. No. Right? But you, you don't, you're not letting it enter you because you're angry about the fact of what has been demanded of you mm -hmm. and what has been required of you. But that wasn't real love. And you yeah. keep telling yourself it's real love, but it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So you're getting confused between what's real love and what happened to you. What happened to you is completely different to what is happening to you now. Both of you have loving husbands, and yet you don't feel their love. Mm. You just don't. It's like from, a, from the male's perspective, it's almost like, like I can love you, but, but I know you don't really trust me yet. <laughs> you don't really believe it yet, right? And that's because you still think that what you're receiving, even from your husbands or from your partners, are what you got before. Yeah. And, th and it's not. It's nothing like what you got before. Yeah. Right? So, so it's not real love that's your problem. It's the fact that you still believe in the old style. Yeah. And, you still, and you're unwilling to let go of the hurt of that. So I'd, I'd encourage you both to do that. Yeah. And I've talked to you before at length about some of how to do that. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Jesus. Yep. Does Thank that you. help, Joe? That's yep. exactly right. It's yes. exactly what's happening. Yes. And, and I see the guys nod when I say, <laughs> yep. you know, I keep you know, loving her, but she keeps thinking I don't. Yep. <laughs> you know, I see the guys nodding at that. So, yeah. Vanessa, um, your question was incestuous same sex relationships, dependency, and blocks to God. Could you be a bit more specific for me? Yes, yeah, certainly. And it flows on from what Rani was saying. So, I feel From that was Rani was saying. Rani, yes. Um, yes. So, would I be right in saying ditto for pretty much everything you said to Rani for yes, myself? You would. You would. Um, You've had a very similar dynamic in your childhood. Yes, and I've really blamed m my mum for that. Yes. But what I've realised in the last couple of days, I haven't allocated any responsibility really to my dad. Yes. And um, so I've been really angry at men for not giving me what I want. Yeah. But I've I've really been angry for mum for giving me the injury in the first place. Um, yeah. Because you're, in your case, your mother wanted to get rid of your dad. Yeah, she made the, – the thing I mean about incestuous, I don't mean sexual. Yeah. Um, I mean, mean emotionally. Incestuous. Emotionally. It's like the anger – I was taught that men um, were always going to let you down. They basically just want sex and they're just um, awful beings. So this is your mum's beliefs about men? Yes. Yes. Um, so you, you come with me and comfort me. So I had to be her best friend. So she, the woman has to now, like, you had to now comfort mum about all of that. Yeah, and my grandmother. For the first three years I lived with, with, both, of with both of them. And my dad, poor dad, like, it's hard because I feel sorry for dad because you couldn't live in that situation. I agree. My, my grandmother was... Um, but he still psychotic. Could have shown you that he loved you. 
Yes, and and he did, and right until the day he died, he chose not to. Correct. So, yeah. and he, he chose to because he he was basically just weak when it came to women. Yeah, he just did what women wanted, or or just re, or just stayed away from them. Yeah, right. The person who truly loves doesn't do either of those things. If if you have a daughter and you're a man who has a daughter, you would do everything you possibly could to have the relationship. And even if, even like I said before, even if you, you know you know it causes huge amount of arguments with the ex, what you do is you just write to them and you just keep doing it and you keep doing it. And what I would do if I was those guys is I'd keep a copy of every letter because there's a high likelihood that woman, the mother, is going to destroy every yeah. letter to their child. And there might be an opportunity at some point in the future where you can say, look, I did love you. Here it all is. And, and then the girl gets a chance to read through all those letters, feel some emotion about the fact that daddy loved her and that mum didn't want him to, mm. and, and go through a lot of those emotions. So your dad didn't choose to do that, and he didn't choose to do that because he really... You know, once he start, once he felt their feelings from mum and grandma, basically he just wrote off the whole thing. Yeah, um, he was physically present my whole life, yep. but just not emotionally. Never. Um, so what I've then done is um, repeated that cycle That's with nice. with my two girls um, yep. and had that. Well, no man's ever going to love me. I need some love, so I'll suck it out of them. Suck it out of them. And yeah. it's it's really. Yeah, it's it just gross when you start to... Yeah, it's damaging to them. So there's a, some repentance to do there, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically I guess what I'm saying is I guess I've made um, my mum in, in some ways my God substitute she to is. get those feelings. Yeah. Would that be right to say? Well, um, no, it's really the opposite way that you're thinking. Um, you made your children the God substitute. Okay, yeah, and and my and eldest your daughter. Made you the God substitute. Yes, yeah, and and she did. Um, you know, there were certain areas. This is where I get confused. It had really positive, like grossly positive, affirmations, like confirming my physical attributes as as being a quality that was of course of worth. Yeah. See, see, what she's doing is she's creating a superiority imbalance. See, what she's saying, what what your mum's trying to do is here's your mum. What she's trying to do, and this is, applies to many of your parents, what they try to do is they try to create a superiority imbalance in the heart of the child. And what I mean by that is if the child is a girl and they approve of girls, they try to make that girl feel like boys are like this. <laughs> yeah. Smaller than they are, You're not as good as they are, not as pretty as they are, not as nice as they are. You know, their appendages are, are ugly and all. They just go through the whole thing, right? Because this, this woman has so much hatred for that gender that she tries to encourage in the girl child the same amount of hatred for the same gender. Does that make sense? Yes. And, and this is a very common thing that happens in relationships where, where the parent tries to encourage in the child the same belief systems that the parent actually has by, by carroting, you know what I mean by that, putting a carrot before them yeah. With all the good qualities and really hammering the bad ones. Yeah, but then by the same token, it's like men were worshipped because they provided certain things. So there was that prostitution. I come from a long line of that yeah. prostitution, and I had a, you know, my grandmother had a series of. Um, she was a mistress to yeah. and and yeah. brought those men into the house which I was living, in. and yeah. so I'm just becoming aware of those kind of dynamics. And even that is caused by a lot of rage with men, actually. Yeah. And a desire to have complete control over them. Ironically, they don't get much control over them, but that's no. the thing that's driving So my them. feelings that my grandmother was implicit in any abuse that happened is, is a real thing. Like, yeah, she was the gatekeeper. In fact, I, uh, it's hard to say, but I almost felt like she was my pimp. Well, you know, like, oh, I can't, yeah. Yeah. She, she, the, the woman in your family selected for you what relationships you would have yeah. and what they would allow. And if I had any feelings about participating in these interactions, particularly with older men, um, I would be told, no, no, he's a nice man. Yeah. He takes us out for dinner. Or, Correct. You know, yeah, he, he's... A payment yeah. in return. Money, security, safety, yeah. comfort. But yeah. then I've attracted... 
I did actually have an abusive relationship between 28 and 31 yeah. where he emotionally hammered m me with that. You come from a long line of prostitutes, you're worth nothing and yeah. all you've got is your looks and you're losing that, like, you know. <laughs> And yeah. then from that point, That's I've... That's an awesome attraction. It is. And then it's I've just chosen... The, just the opposite of, of what you would have normally wanted, right? Yeah. Mm. Just to show you what's really going on inside of yourself in a lot of ways. But I chose not to see that and... Of course. ...picked a man who was... The opposite? Yeah. 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 yeah and that's what do. I need to repent We for. often swing between opposites like that, avoiding the same emotion. Just swing from one yeah. area to another area, but it's the same emotion every time we're avoiding. Yeah. Thanks so anyway, much. Anyway, let's uh, move on, shall we? Okay. Barbara McNair. Uh, you said, my fears and false beliefs about God that block me. Can you be more specific? Um, um, I had been attending church and Sunday school from when I was conceived until the age of 15. Yes, and what were you taught about God? Um, uh, yeah, God was going to punish me. If you were? Bad girl. And what was the definition of a bad girl? Anything that I did, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much everything you are right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so of course, of course, you're going to have blockages with God. Yeah, and I feel this daily. I've yep. come to the realization that I don't want to stay the same person. I yeah, do want to. Can, can we just stay? I'm not going to get through all of these if yep. you all talk to me about all of your realizations. Yep. Does that make sense? So, what I want to do is be specific with you. You are going to need to deconstruct your emotional beliefs about God. That means you're going to need to feel them. And you've been avoiding feeling them because all of them are inside of your hurt child. And what do you feel about your hurt child? She's, yeah, she's a nuisance. She's a pest. I ignore her. Exactly. Yeah. So unless you allow yourself to connect to your hurt child and honour her and love her and care for her and have compassion for her, you will not get through these blocks with God. You're going to have to connect to her and allow her to have her feelings about God. Does that make sense? rather than you telling her what feelings she should have about God, which is, if you think about it, exactly what these ministers and priests and everybody told you and nuns told you about what you should have towards God. Just the opposite. So, you, you know, they told you God's punishing, God's this, God's that, and you can't, she came to believe that, and now you're trying to tell her, no, no, God, that's wrong, that's wrong, God's this, God's that, what's wrong with you, why can't you connect to God? Have some compassion for her. She's had years of what I would classify as manipulation, abuse, and also what I would classify as mind games, right? Played with a very young child to cause her to have a certain belief about God. You're going to need to help her undo all of that. Does that make sense to you? So let your hurt child say to you what she feels about God. And instead of judging her, let her feel what she feels. I'm, I, I tried to go there, but my hurt child has this confusion between Jesus and God as well. Of course, so let her have that. <coughs> she has all the things that are locked up at the ages that it was caused. Let her have it. Stop, stop judging what she has and have compassion for the fact she was brought up in an environment that this was just brainwashed into her let her have the feelings. Let her tell you what they are and then educate her. Well, actually, it's not like that. But don't punish her. Don't, don't get hard on her. Don't push her around. Do you see what I'm saying? Educate her through the process. Yeah. Thanks. Paige and Kerry. Codependent addiction in our relationship that are blocking our relationship with God. Can you be more specific? There's probably many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> um, this is probably a loaded question. Yeah. And it's got lots of components to so it. Load up the question, shoot her out. <laughs> um, we both have rage with men. You do. 
and to be honest, neither of us have really connected with why. Yes, do you know why? Because we don't want to. <laughs> no, because you, in your day-to-day -day life, basically avoid interactions with men. This is why you have a relationship currently. At the moment, you are avoiding relationship with men. I don't mean sexual relationship. I mean just even interactions with men. You, you dislike men so much, you just don't really even want to have an interaction with them, right? Agreed. Now, now, how are you going to address your emotions with men while you don't even engage in interaction with them? That's pretty hard. It's going to be pretty hard, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Now, can you see that if you don't engage in interaction with them, you're probably not going to even identify the emotions associated with why you feel so bad about men. Now, some of the interactions have been forced upon you, right? So when you went to Kenya, for example, you had a lot of male-based interactions forced upon you. And, and what was your response to those interactions? We got angry when they didn't do what we wanted. Correct. So mm -hmm. there you go. They, they showed mm. you one problem, which is you want the man to do what you want. And when, when he doesn't do what you want, what do you do? Get angry with him. You get angry with him and you just berate him. And, and like we told you so many times to stop talking to these men. And what did yep. you keep doing? We wanted them to admit what they'd done. Exactly. You just couldn't stop talking to them. You had to keep talking. To them. You had to keep talking. You had to shove it down their throat. Right? Yeah. Because right? surely they'll see it. Okay. So you see that? So you, so, you, so you need to feel that anger and rage and feel how much you don't want to get beyond that anger and rage. Remember the discussion I had with Louise, how we went through the reasons why you don't want to get beyond this anger and rage? Feel some of your reasons. That's my suggestion to you why you don't want to get beyond the anger with men. And yes, part of your relationship together is about avoiding these, these things. You both want to avoid them, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes and sense. And to be honest with you, it's a big issue in your lives. Yeah, I know. Big issue. And in a way, you use, you use your sexual preference as a way to avoid the issue almost altogether. And by the way, many other women who are lesbians do that as well. Yeah, to the degree where we're honestly not even sure if we are gay souls. Correct. And many people who are, uh, who are homosexual in, in what they think are homosexual are actually either not or they don't even know whether they really are because they've got so much rage with the opposite gender. Yeah. So a lot of homosexual men, huge amounts of rage with their mothers and a lot of homosexual women, huge amounts of rage with their fathers or their absent fathers and so forth that they need to address. Once they address that, they'll be able to feel whether they are actually, you know, truly a gay soul or not. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yep. So, so, okay. <laughs> <you go. laughs> so would the rage be um, the way we feel about our fathers or the way our mothers feel about Men. Well, it could be either, couldn't it? Yeah. The key for you is to feel the rage itself, to feel the anger. What is it that you're not getting? So in the case of over in Kenya, what weren't you getting? You weren't getting them listen to you. They were treating women unequally. Right? These are all reasons why you don't like men. That You've got an internal list, and may, may, maybe it's good to write it down, your internal list of all the reasons why you don't like men. Yeah. Uh, that'll help you identify where your injuries are. Because men are nice people, right? Yeah. Well, just as nice as any woman anyway. Yeah. <laughs> God didn't create one gender, women, who are just lovely and beautiful, and then create the other gender, men, who are just basically bastards. God didn't do that. Right? Yeah. So, so when you believe that, you're out of harmony with love and certainly out of harmony with God, right? Yeah, it seems really illogical as to why, you know, well, we had examples of it during the booking process yep. where a woman could be unloving, but, oh, no, that's yeah, okay. You, yeah, you, know, you skipped we'll right over the Point it out right? and, yeah, that's all right. But a man. What did you do with the man? Holy shit. Yeah. It's like, I'm not giving him anything. No. I'm not going to give him the room he wants, the price he wants, the blah, 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 blah. and if yeah. I could charge him another $100, I would just for the, my time spent, right? Yeah, there was just <laughs> like this. I can't this, get away with that with AJ Mary. So. Yeah, this huge thing that immediately just erupts out of 
Yeah. Well, me specifically. Yeah. I'm so, like, where does that come from? Well, this Sorry. is where, so you don't want to know where it came from, otherwise you'd already know. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is focus on the discussion that I had with Louise about a different subject, but it's the same issue. It's the issue where you're feeling the starting point of the emotion associated with your sin, which is the rage, but you're not feeling the next point, which is what's the cause of it? Why, why do I have it? Yeah. And, and you need to go there. At the moment, you don't want to go there because you just want to stay angry with men. So, so you're going to have to get yeah. over the want to stay angry with men and into why do I want to stay angry with men? So that's about listing all of the hurts, the things you didn't get and the things you did get from men that you didn't want. Does that make sense? And you need to do some sincere work in that okay. regard. Okay, let's yep. move Thank on. You. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. How are we going, time? We've only got a few minutes left, guys. There's going to be some people missing out. Sorry. Um, we, we might try to do this, uh, I don't know, when we'll fit it in. Yeah, anyway, we'll see. Right, Rachel, I'd like to confront my fears about receiving truth. Is that the question? <coughs> yep. Good day. Fears are all about beliefs that are false. So, so ask yourself, what are my false beliefs about receiving truth? All right? Now, when you ask that question, false beliefs about receiving truth all relate to our hurt child and what happened when it received truth. So what I would do is I'd go back to my childhood and go, every time I had truth presented to me, you know, every time somebody put truth in front of me, what was the emotional connotation, what was the situation, the circumstance under which I received this truth? So what can you, can you think of a few, a few of them? Yeah, I feel a lot of humiliation, actually. So, there's a, so, so one of the reasons why you're blocked to receiving truth is, sorry, is because... When you were chi a child, you were humiliated every time you received truth. So now you now believe that a part of receiving truth is being humiliated. You need to feel the emotion of being humiliated rather than avoid it. Does that make sense? While this emotion exists within you, any time someone tries to present the truth to you, you're going to feel humiliated. And that's going to put up a wall. So it blocks you from receiving it. Is there any other motion you can think of? Yeah, shame as well, I guess. Shamed, and, yeah, so you were I mean, shamed. Judgment. I just feel like my whole environment's going to come down on me. And Yeah, and it did, right, in, yeah. a, in a childhood. So, this is, so basically if you add up all of these feelings, they are really what you would classify as attack, aren't they? So, so you believe receiving truth is an attack upon you. Does that make sense? Now, the only way that false belief can leave you is by you feeling it. And that's what you've been avoiding doing. So you avoid feeling these emotions and then you go, why am I resistive to feeling truth? Well, it's because these emotions are there and they're just stopping you from receiving truth. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Good day. Um, who are we next? Uh, Marion, I just need to talk to you. Where, where is Marion? Over here. Yep. Um, I know you didn't, you didn't, you weren't concerned about getting the rest of this answer, but, but I, I just need to say to you, you are heavily influenced in almost every emotion by spirits. Mm -hmm. So even the emotions where you think you're getting attacked, you're not getting attacked. Spirits are attacking you, and you're just open to that feeling. Mm -hmm. So p often you you treat people around you like like they're attacking you, but they're not attacking you. It's the spirits with you attacking you when you're with that person. They don't want you to be with that person, and so you then say to that person, I'm, you're attacking me, I'm leaving, I'm out the door. Right? You blame the people around you for all of your interactions with spirits. Now, why do you do this? Because you've given up your will to actually engage your own feelings, mm -hmm. and you just feel everything they feel. Mm -hmm. And they can tell you a whole heap of false beliefs, a whole heap of false things. It just goes on and on and on and on. And you want it, 
and you've mm. got to look at why you want it. That's your main problem. You want mm -hmm. it and you've got to see why. Mm -hmm. So I, my suggestion to you is analyse why, what you get out of, how powerful this connection with spirits makes you feel. Mm -hmm. right? Analyse that because that's the problem that you face. That's your biggest problem. It's causing a lot of problems for you and your life. Mm -hmm. You desperately want this interaction with spirits all the time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Right? David, Ryan. Eight minutes we got. I'd like to question about my resistance to looking at my sexual addictions. Yes? All sexual addictions are based around usually two things. The first thing is a whole... Well, firstly, they're all obviously avoidance of some hurt, right? Mm. So you understand that. You're avoiding yep. some hurt here. And the main thing with sexual addictions is you're avoiding the hurt that you feel inside of yourself with regard to your worth with, in, rela in relation to or in reference to the opposite gender. So in other words, inside of ourselves, we, so this is you, you have two, supposedly two parents, right? You didn't, of course, you mostly had one parent looking after you, didn't you? Or one gender looking after you is a better way of putting it. Yeah, that's you correct. Know, the woman gender is who you had more, looking after you most of the time. Now, in this process, this means that as you get hurt, there's two ways the second chakra, if you like, the, the worth part of you gets hurt. One way is by the same gender parent. And the other way is by the opposite gender parent. Now, when we have sexual addictions that we project out the opposite gender, that demonstrates that we've been hurt from a worth perspective with the opposite gender. Do you follow me? Yeah, yep. I follow you. Yeah. So, so, so what I would start doing is, okay, every time you feel drawn into some sexual addiction, whether that's, you know, for some of you it might be pornography, for some of you it might be just needing a woman's sexual approval or attention in order to feel good about yourself, understand that this has to have come from something in your childhood where the worth hasn't been developed in regard to or in reference to that gender. Okay. Does that make sense? So, in my past, I've also been open to, or still am, I feel like receiving sexual projections from males as well. You are, yes. So, you. that's pretty much the same thing, just on just with the male side. It's just got to do with worth with the male. Exactly. Your way, the way you were taught in your childhood to get worth, is by having a sexual interaction. Does that make sense? And and no sexual interaction meant no worth. Right. Now, this indicates that your mother, in particular, had an emotionally incestuous relationship with you and also a sexually incestuous relationship, even though it wasn't abuse, or your grandmother, you know, what it, who, whoever brought you up. Both. Both. Yep. So the key emotionally is to allow yourself to feel the emotions tied in with why, why there's the sexual connotation of getting the worth met and that that can only have been created through some kind of emotionally incestuous sexual connection yeah, in your childhood. Yeah. It's a way, if you think about it, it's a way of exchanging sexual energy for worth. So the outward projection is the, the sexual projection and the desire coming back is not necessarily sex, it's worth you're looking for. Okay, so I can project sexually and just get approval back or something Correct. like that. Correct. So it's and just then that you barter. feel you have worth. It's a bartering system for of emotion. Mm. You project outward a sexual feeling. The other person projects back to you a feeling of approval. Mm. That's one of the feelings you're looking for. Does that make sense? So even because I noticed recently like this idea of being the charming boy, like I was always told and given approval for being a charming boy, but then I've felt that actually the feeling coming from me when I'm charming is, is actually just a sexual feeling. Yes. Yeah. So it's just a flirtatious that happening. feeling mm. yeah, coming from you. You were taught to have flirtatious feelings, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, three minutes, guys. It's time for one more. Sorry, there's still 
We might do these another time if you don't mind this format. <laughs> Does that sound all right with you? Because, but there's quite a lot more. <laughs> so, okay, Paul. Where is it? Over there. Yes. Paul, you asked about your food addictions. Yep. I think you've sort of cottoned on to most of those from our discussion the other night. Yep. Yep. You can start seeing that food was a way of control and way of controlling your emotions, controlling yep. certain feelings. What else was it? What um, are the things you've already noticed? Well, the things which I listed was a, a, a fear of starving to death yeah. and um, being a burden and unwanted, yep. feeling hated. Um, perhaps meal times was a time when it was around mum and a demand from mum. Yeah, and mum always was trying to wean all of you off of food, wasn't she? Yeah. Yep. So she had how many children? Eleven. Yeah. So with eleven children, she's trying to co control the amount of food that's being consumed by these eleven children. So that means each of you at some point are going to miss out. Yeah. Yep. So that's a feeling of not having enough. Yeah. That was a causal feeling that entered you during your childhood, that you're never going to get enough. You have to compete for mm, food. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is one of the reasons why, a big reason why you've got the issue. Mm. Yeah. So what's the hurt emotion? The hurt emotion is mum didn't care about me enough to actually prepare, to prepare enough food for me. Mm. And in fact, she was okay with me going hungry. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So there's a lot there with regard to women yeah. being willing to make you go hungry. Yeah. Isn't there? G'day. One minute. <laughs> Dave. Yeah, you brought up family issues. Your kids, your ex-wife feels a mess. It is a mess, I agree. Yep. <laughs> right? And you've created a mess through one main problem that you have, and that is you've absconded from the use of your own will in a loving direction. In other words, you've avoided the use of your own will in a loving direction, and in that process you've become overcloaked by spirits who basically tell you what to do. And the reason why most of your messes have occurred is because you listen to these spirits and do exactly what they say in your day-to-day -day life, and you like it. You like doing it. My suggestion to you, firstly, is that you are abdicating responsibility for your own life. In other words, you don't want to take responsibility for your life. My suggestion is the children are a great way for you to start exercising some responsibility, to start you know, paying for their welfare, pay, mm -hmm. paying for their food, you know, doing all these things that a dad who loves their children would do. And my suggestion to you is that you have actually, in a way, allowed yourself to become like a child who needs other people to look after it. And this is how you've completely dismissed the use of your own will. Now, you were encouraged to do this, of course, by your parents. So you need to see that. You need to have some, you know, some honesty about mm -hmm. the fact that somebody else encouraged you to do it. But you're an adult now. You can choose differently. Yeah. So my suggestion to you is start taking responsibility for the exercise of your own will and stop listening to spirits directing you to, to do things that are quite obviously, particularly to other people, unloving. Does that make sense? Yep. I've, I've started you know, providing for the kids or trying to provide for them, but my ex-wife doesn't want anything from me. But so I would create a fund for them that I would continue to put stuff in every week and when they became of age or whatever, I'd say, look, your mum didn't want me to do this, but I decided to do it anyway. Yeah. I'm put it, I put away since you were 10, I put yeah. away 50 bucks a week, so here's 10 grand. Mm. The two that are still in school, I'd just go and pay some towards their school fees. Yeah, there's, there's lots of things you can choose to do. Yeah. The reason why your wife feels so resentful is because you have chosen to abscond from your life quite a lot and she is now very angry about it. Right. And I've been blaming her for turning the kids against me. Of course you have. But it's, mm. the reality is your kids have turned against you primarily because you've, you've completely disclaimed the use of your will. Once you go through the forgiveness process with why you did that and, and actually repent for the tr treatment of your children and so forth, you'll find that they're, they're, they will change towards you. They will feel a change in you. 
Okay. And even your wife will feel a change in you. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. At the okay. moment, they're all feeling very hurt that you've just walked away without feeling responsible. Would that include the youngest? Of course. All of them are going to feel this way because all of them have been taught to feel this way both by you, your emotions, and also by your wife, who now feels a large degree of resentment for your actions. Because I've instigated uh, mediation proceedings. Right. And, um, My suggestion is it's not worth going through mediation proceedings until you've dealt with this emotion. Because right. all you're going to do is act out this emotion in all of the interactions as if, yep. as if somebody else is responsible rather than you taking responsibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I would suggest, well, it's up to you what you do, but my suggestion yeah. to you would be deal with the emotion of why you took no responsibility at all and, and you'll feel that there's a, you'll notice that there is going to be a lot of anger in that, Dave. You're going to have a lot of anger in that. You've got a very, you've got a very childhood emotion in you of rage of you shouldn't have to take any responsibility. That's the feeling you have. I shouldn't have to, right? There's a real strong rage. You need to connect with that, feel that. You need to work your way through this emotionally because if you don't, no amount of mediation is going to solve the problem. Yeah. And that's a childhood rage, not an adult. Yeah, it's not an adult rage. It's a childhood feeling of like, I just don't want to take any responsibility at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dinner time, guys. So we'll have to skip the rest. Now, those of you who have missed out, we'll try to fit you in at some other point. I'm not sure when that will be yet, but it might be tomorrow sometime in the afternoon or something like that. We might get a chance. So I'm down to... Yeah, there's still quite a number, isn't there? So anyway, we'll see how we go. All right. Thanks, guys. See you at lunch. <laughs>